The convention season is in full swing, and we've got plenty of Comic-Con and Star Wars celebration news for you, as well as new toy sightings from Hasbro. It's Friday, July 16th, and you'll hear about those stories, as well as the announcement of a new Celebration 5 exclusive this week in Star Wars, coming to you at long last from our new broadcast headquarters. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. Comic-Con International takes place next week in San Diego, California. Per recent tradition, Friday of the convention is Star Wars Day. While this year's pickings are slightly smaller than in recent years, no doubt due to the occurrence of Star Wars Celebration 5 only a couple weeks later, there are still a number of events being held in Room 7AB. These include panels by DK Publishing as well as Hasbro, a Clone Wars panel featuring Dave Filoni, Joel Arnold, and Killian Plunkett, a collecting discussion hosted by Chris Spitali of Lucasfilm Licensing, as well as a Star Wars trivia contest at the end of the day. Other Star Wars events occur throughout the weekend, including a discussion of the Her Universe line by Ashley Eckstein, as well as How to Draw Star Wars, and presentations by various other Star Wars licensees, such as Sideshow Collectibles. Another Star Wars licensee, Gentle Giant, announced that it will have two Star Wars exclusives available at Comic-Con, a Macquarie Darth Vader mini-bust with three alternate heads, as well as a reproduction of a vintage Kenner 3 and 3 quarter inch Stormtrooper figure in a 12-inch form on a reproduction card. Information on ordering both of these exclusives is available on the Gentle Giant Limited website. And full informations on Comic-Con are available on the Comic-Con website. If you were unable to attend Comic-Con this year, or, like ESPN, simply have an East Coast bias, most of these presentations will no doubt be repeated a couple weeks later at the earlier alluded to Star Wars Celebration 5. The announcements are beginning to hit fast and furious from the folks at Lucasfilm, as their tri-annual dog and pony show is now less than a month away. After last month's announcement that George Lucas himself will be attending the convention, it was announced this week that Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, will be making his first appearance at a stateside Star Wars celebration. According to the StarWars.com press release, Hamill will appear in the autograph hall on Friday and Saturday of the convention, with the possibility of him extending another day. Start saving now as his fee for autographs will be the premium price of $125. Hamill will also appear on the celebration stage at a time to be determined. Two other recent announcements about celebrity appearances are individuals known more for their behind-the-scenes work. Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back producer Gary Kurtz, as well as sound designer and film editor Ben Burt, will be making their first appearances at a Star Wars celebration in the Autograph Hall. According to Star Wars Celebration, the guest list is now up to 43, and a complete list can be found at the StarWarsCelebration.com website. Also on the Star Wars Celebration website, most notably and most importantly recently, is the release of the initial Star Wars Celebration 5 event schedule. While many of the blanks still indicate TBA information will soon follow, it is nonetheless a relief to a number of attendees to have this long-awaited information. Celebration 5 exclusive announcements continue to roll in as well, ranging from exclusive limited edition art prints in the artist gallery to miniature replica parody cereal boxes at the collector's panels, Nearly every Star Wars licensee will have something on hand for the faithful. While many of the exclusives have been mentioned on previous episodes of this podcast, we are proud that This Week in Star Wars has been asked to make the official announcement of a new Celebration 5 exclusive that will be available from the DC Star Wars Collectors Club. Thanks to the generous contributions of some of their members, a series of four Empire Strikes Back themed stickers have been produced. 
These stickers are in the style of the late 70s General Mills serial pack-in stickers from the first Star Wars movie and make a worthy accompaniment to the retro cereal box promotion that is going on at the collector's panels at Celebration 5. These stickers will be available for anyone who asks, while supplies last, at the DC Star Wars Collectors Club booth, which will be open throughout the convention. Moving on from Celebration news, there are a number of new developments in the world of collecting this week. Me? I'm a collecting fool. Most notably, the new 2010 Hasbro figures have been showing up regularly at Toys R Us's across the country. These include both the new and highly anticipated Vintage Collection, as well as new Clone Wars figures and the new Saga Legends line. The new $20 to $25 price point vehicles, such as the redesigned Cloud Car and Snow Speeder, are also widely available, and there have been sporadic sightings at the House of Giraffe of the AT-AT. While these items include a traditional Toys R Us markup from the Target Walmart base prices, the vintage figures have seen a somewhat disarressing price point of $10 a figure. However, two recent Toys R Us promotions, which give you a second figure at half off the sticker price with the purchase of a first figure, have softened the blow somewhat, and have Hoth Diorama builders veritably drooling at the possibility of two new big AT-ATs for only $150. Some figures, such as the new Clone Wars figures, as well as the vintage line, have been selling quickly, but panicky collectors are cautioned to remember that these figures will be showing up widely at every retailer in the coming weeks. Online retailer Entertainment Earth has made available for pre-order the final Final Four comic packs. Long ago alluded to by Hasbro, it was thought by many in the collecting community that these figures would not see the light of day. However, they are now available for November delivery. The four two-packs include X-Wing Road Squadron pack featuring Baron Fell and Isani Zard, a Legacy pack featuring Darth Nell and Delilah Blue, a Knights of the Old Republic packet with Jareel and Roland Dyer, and Django Fett Open Seasons featuring two Mandalorians, Jaster Mareel and Montross. If you intend to order these packs, I encourage you to use the Entertainment Earth link on the front page of the ThisWeekInStarWars.com website. JediDefender.com has packaged photos of the suspected, but not yet confirmed, until now, retooled TIE Bomber vehicle. The vehicle appears to be of the light gray persuasion, as opposed to blue or white, although we can no doubt expect to see those at some time in the future, and there is no indication on the packaging as to whether or not it will be exclusive to any particular retailer. The 2010 Hallmark Christmas ornaments are now available at Hallmark stores across the country, and in addition to teddy bears and other cute animals engaged in unnatural acts, there are the normal number of Star Wars ornaments available this year. Included among the Empire Strikes Back heavy releases is a Lando Calrissian exclusive figure which will be only available at retailers until the first shipment is sold out, and at many locations may already be so. So, if you collect ornaments of barren administrators of gas mining facilities, get to your Hallmark store as soon as possible. And check out the other new Star Wars ornaments as well, bearing in mind that they will be on sale for half off as of December 26th. We might just take a few of them with us. Star Wars licensee Sideshow Collectibles has released a number of new products for pre-order in recent weeks. These include a Darth Maul reconstructed premium format figure, life-size Obi-Wan Kenobi and C-3PO busts, a bronze Jango Fett for only $4,500, and 12-inch figures of Hammerhead and the Gamorrean Guard. Hammerhead is also now available for pre-order as a mini-bust from Gentle Giant, who also announced a Cad Bane animated-style maquette. Gentle Giant Premier Guild members can pre-order these sets now on the Gentle Giant website, and they will soon be available for the general public in anticipation of a March 2011 release. In our last bit of collecting news this week, the newest LEGO sets have been spotted at Toys R Us's across the country. 
Sporting the new blue Shadows of the Dark Side packaging, new sets include a redesigned Turbo Tank, redesigned General Grievous Starfighter, redesigned Boba Fett Slave 1, Emperor Palpatine Shuttle from Episode 3, and a Wampa Cave. Expect to see these sets, as well as a new AT-AT, at retailers across the country soon. Robot Chicken will be going to the Star Wars well for a third time in December of this year with Robot Chicken Star Wars Episode 3, which announcements up to this point indicate that Zac Efron will appear as Anakin Skywalker and Anthony Daniels will be appearing as C-3PO. Series co-creator Seth Green will be appearing at Comic-Con to discuss the project as well as his roles on Family Guy and, if past precedent is any indication, may likely appear at Celebration 5 as well. One Star Wars name who will not be appearing in Celebration 5 is David Prowse, the actor in the Darth Vader suit in the original trilogy, and longtime convention staple. Prowse's own website, DarthVader-StarWars.com, confirms that he has been informed by the autograph powers that be at Celebration 5 that he will not be invited to attend. This is because he has, quote, burnt too many bridges with Lucasfilm in the past. No indication as to what exactly this means, although the internet abounds with rumors that I will not go into here, and will simply say that he is a longtime Star Wars personality whose presence will be missed at the celebration. Finally this week in video game news, the earlier mentioned Star Wars Battle for Hoth Tower Defense game is now available for the iPhone and iPod Touch, in the iTunes App Store. Published by THQ Wireless, the game allows you to defend the Auth Echo Base against endless waves of AT-ATs and snowtroopers. Owners of iThings can pick the game up for $2.99. So, what do you hope to get out of Celebration 5? Everybody seems to think there's going to be a big announcement or some sort of surprise at the convention, or Lucas wouldn't be appearing. The last time he showed up at one of these conventions, Celebration 3 in 2005, he announced the quote-unquote upcoming animated and live-action shows. Well, one school of thought believes that he will be using this event again to announce the upcoming live-action show, considering we have the animated show. Others seem absolutely certain that he'll be announcing episodes 7, 8, and 9. I personally have much lower expectations and would be completely content with the announcement of all six films being made available in Blu-ray. I know I've asked for that before, but... Watching the films again in HD on Spike TV over the 4th of July just reinforced my desire to have these in even better HD resolution without commercial interruption and in my own greasy paws. So whether it's one of those things or the films being re-released in 3D, we all just hope that the maker shows up with a really good announcement and not just an update on Red Tails. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit us at www.thisweekinstarwars.com or, for our lazier listeners, www.twisw.com, where you can find more news, notes, and details about the stories mentioned here, as well as an archive of all past episodes. Visit our Facebook page and start a discussion or leave a comment or just be provocative in some way. If you have news or an event that you would like to have announced on This Week in Star Wars, feel free to email details to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. We will try to accommodate all those requests as they come in. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All of the trademarks are property of their respective trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. 
More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. I must have spent our last $10 on this Al Gordo! You are hearing me talk.